Hi, my name is Slavi Marino, founder of Rubisius. In this video, I'm going to walk you through four ways to customize a WordPress plugin. First, why would you do that? Well, there's lots of plugins within the repository and also paid ones, but they may get close to what you need, but not 100%. So you may need to either you tweak the, the plugin's code or have somebody do it for you. So here are the four ways. There's several approaches. So the first one is to update the code directly. The second one is to create a separate add-on, which is a brand new plugin that integrates well with the plugin. The third one is a hybrid approach. You partially update the main plugin, but also create an add-on. And the last one is the Frankenstein's monster approach. Take multiple plugins, get some ideas and code, and build one. Each of them has advantages and disadvantages. Well, depending on the situation, you want to pick the right, the right approach for you. So the first one, if you hack the plugin's code, it is usually a fast way to, relatively fast way to do that customization, because the plugin does something, and you need to spend time learning about how it works and what are its features like internally and so on and you plug your code in the right spot the problem with that is when the plugin gets updated your changes will be lost so you have to keep track of what changes you made in order to reapply those changes when the plugin is updated i checked some forums and some people resort with that approach and they put the main plugin into svn or git and then they pull the latest version and use a diff tool to see the differences and that's how our merge tool that's how they reapply the changes and it's pain in the neck and to always have to think about applying those changes and if if those updates are regular you have to take time out of your day in order to to make those changes i don't recommend this but sometimes the business needs something quick and dirty and it needs to work because if you're sending lots of people to a given page or to a given site and you want that website to work right now because the ads are running and there's promotions and if there's affiliates you definitely need something quick to work and then later you can invest some time and build a proper solution so the next option is to create an add-on to the plugin how would you create an add-on well some well-written plugins they they use the WordPress hook system very well. And also, they also extend, they also use their own hooks, like for example, filters and, and actions. For example, some themes, they would allow you to modify the title in addition to the default WordPress filter for the that process, the title. Some good plugins, for example, I have listed those here like WooCommerce, S2 Member, BB Press, Body Press, Street Content Pro, all of them they have hooks that get triggered at a given time. That the plugin that wants to integrate with those plugins can hook into those plugins, those hooks to perform a given action, which is super convenient. And when the main plugin gets updated, well, your changes are safe because there's putting a separate plugin. Some people they would use functions.php, but I don't recommend that. I recommend that you create a separate plugin for a given functionality. And that's a better way to troubleshoot things later on. And if you if there's a bug, you can deactivate just one plugin and not one giant plugin. I used to do that, but it turned out that not a bad idea. Okay, the third option is it's a hybrid one between the first one and the, and the second one. For example, the plugin may be very well written and it works great, but it doesn't have the, the actual hook that you need. If you want to process a given piece of text or if you want to run a given functionality, given code within a given moment, then you have to update the plugin's code and add only the, the lines that you need, only the, the, 
the code that triggers a custom action that you've defined. Also, it's a good idea to take a look at the code, how the plugins developer has used the hook system and what's the naming convention, and what's the how the parameters are passed to it and so on. So you can create one and also document it. And that's that's also a good way to good way to do the customization. And also of course contact the developer and explain why you needed that kind of hook and explain how you're using it. If you create if you can create a screencast that will help them understand where you're coming from. And you never know, maybe that feature will be added to a future version of that plugin. And the last approach is the Frankenstein's monster approach. You like a given piece of functionality, but you want it to work in a certain way, let's say, can work 80% one way and 20% some other way. And that functionality can be pulled from different plugins and you want to compile something that works specifically for a business. And yes, that's, that's also one of the solutions. But this one is, it takes time. It's time consuming because you're almost building things from scratch. Even though there's good ideas, it's good to take time to learn about the internals of each plugin that you're about to integrate. You also have to check the licensing. Some plugins, they're not GPL, so we have to be careful. And yeah, at the end of the day, do what's right for your business. That's about it. If you ever need a plugin customized or developed from scratch, or if you need a free staging server, check QSandbox, or you can contact me directly by visiting urbcs.com. Thanks, and have a great day. Bye.